Welcome again to the big match. And this is our lineup on the programme today for you. The first match is Derby County against Manchester United. The game of one of the best finishes of the season. And some controversy to go with it. Also today, Luton Town against Notts County. So important in the second division. And finally back to the first division for Tottenham against Southampton. Also today, we should be meeting a great Tottenham star from the past, Jimmy Greaves. What's he doing now? And what does he think of the present Spurs side? In fact, Jimmy, by coincidence, gets a mention in our special feature where we look back at football ten years ago this month, as does George Best, because today we remember a cup tie where George scored six times. It's Prerand, Best, here's the record, there it is, Georgie Best. And the rest you can see later, because now it's time for us to pick up the action as Derby County face George's old club, Manchester United. United with a chance to make up ground on Liverpool, who of course had their game called off. Important for them, and no less important for Derby County as they struggle at the other end of the table. The pictures are from ATV, and the commentator at the baseball ground is Hugh Johns. Derby manager Colin Addison has had second thoughts about Roy McFarlane for this first vital game in February, and his comeback has been delayed for at least another week. So Dave Webb continues in the number five shirt, while Osgood returns to partner Webb. Dave Langan also wins a recall at right back. Up front, Derby are looking to Alan Bailey to start hitting the goals that made him a star at Cambridge and brought about a £400,000 transfer deal three weeks ago. Manchester United have just one problem with a side that has suffered only one First Division defeat in their last nine matches, predictably at Anfield, and they're forced to make a change for the first time in six weeks. Ray Wilkins is injured, so Nikolai Jovanovic becomes the latest foreign import to play in British football. The Yugoslavian international from Red Star Belgrade, he cost £300,000 a couple of weeks ago. He's had less than four hours of practice games to work up any kind of understanding with United's players and their methods. So referee Derek Lloyd of Worcester gets us away. The red, dark red shirts of Manchester United, their white shorts attacking the goal, away to our left. The white jerseys and the dark blue shorts of Derby County. Two linesmen out here today also from the Midlands. Uh, Peter Lancaster from Sutton Coldfield, John Saunders from Kidderminster. First free kick of the game goes to Derby County. Buckley takes it to Osgood. And here's Dave Langan getting his first kick since uh, New Year's. Man United coming here with... Uh, Three away wins of 12 trips in the first division this season. They've won at Villa, Spurs and Coventry. Lou Macari helps that on. There's Jovanovic getting his first touch. Here he goes now. The cross in across the goals. That was a nasty curling cross from the big Yugoslavian. Langer. Alan Bailey. Now Roger Davis. Langan. Barry Powell. Buckley. Back to Steve Powell. It's all going square. No penetration. Langan. Oh, a first time shot on there for Jerry Daly. Oh, where were United then? Jerry Daly, former Old Trafford star. Right in the clear as that ball came in from Lang and nobody picked him up. A free shot at goal and over the bar. Should have done better. And immediately United strike back through McElroy for couple. They got four on three and now the Derby players are getting back. And couple slowed it down a bit. Being chased by Osgood. Well, McCurry got a touch. And a terrible mess then by McKellar. Oh dear, oh dear, that was panic stations for a moment. That was little Lou McCarty who got that touch. McKellar wasn't too sure what was happening, touched it up on the bar, and it was a good job Webb was first to it for Derby. There's the corner, and McQueen gets there. The dangers of this big Scottish international. He came in a little bit late, surprised Derby, they didn't pick him up on that corner. And that looping header was only just over the bar. With McElroy now. McQueen. For Houston. 
Jordan and Langan coming. McElroy's throw for Jordan. Steve Powell has a look forward. There's nobody forward for Garvey. Bailey is breaking from inside his own half. Chased by Houston. Checks against him. A little touch in. Gets there. Beautiful. Barry Powell has scored his first goal since he came here from Coventry. And he's put Derby in the lead. 1-0. 33 minutes of the first half gone. All started by the new signing, Alan Bailey. A lovely curving cross from his left foot. United didn't get it away, and Barry Powell arrives on the far post with a punishing header. 1-0 then. Well, certainly Barry Powell will feel chuffed about that. And here's Barry Powell again. Davis off to Buckley. And a break immediately for United. That long punt out from Bailey picks up Jordan to the line. And the header inside and out. And Thomas will finish it up. No, he won't. McElroy again. But the goal's been given. The goal has been given from Sammy McElroy's header. Well, they're congratulating Mickey Thomas. But it seemed to me that the linesman signal down this side said that the ball in from Joe Jordan here now, we can see more clearly perhaps. There's the header from McElroy. Is it over the line? No, it isn't. Here comes... Oh, it was that time from Mickey Thomas from well inside as McKellar kicked it out. So the goal goes down to Mickey Thomas. 1-1. 38 minutes. So five minutes after Derby took the lead. And just a United strike back and make it 1-1. So Derby got a strike again now. They'd love to do it just before half-time. Osgood. Nickel down for Koppel. Koppel taking on Buckley. Made it difficult for himself now. This ball back to Nickel. And McCurry drives it across the face of the goals. to Bailey and Webb beautiful ball Langham Empson's come down this right side Buchan comes to him Empson again the curving ball Koppel helps it on that'll go for a throw in to Derby County Buckley and can try it again this time for Daly Langan. Davis and Langan trying the one two. Well, they're appealing for a penalty. A challenge by McQueen, but uh, referee Derek Lloyd won't have anything of it. And I tend to agree with him. Nice little bit of one two work between Langan and Davis. There's Langan. A lunge from. McQueen, but the ball had long gone. Jerry Daly then for Dave Webb. Miley against McQueen. Here comes Davis. Daly. Miley and Daly again. Here comes Miley to shoot. And a great save. A beauty from Gary Bailey. Alan Miley very nearly opening his account for his new club. Bringing a superb save from Gary Bailey. Lovely build up with Daly and Bailey. Daly, Bailey, and then Bailey. There's Bailey's shot. There's Bailey's save. 
So referee Derek Lloyd has a look at his watch. Points to the dressing room tunnel. And an entertaining first half of football here ends at the baseball ground. Barry Powell having scored his first goal ever for Derby County. Rubbed out by number 11 there, Mickey Thomas, who sends the teams in level at half-time. Derby County 1, Manchester United 1. So, Derby County kick off attacking the goal to our left. And that's Jovanovic being fouled. And the referee had given advantage and then decides no advantage had been taken by United. So, the free kick given. Rain still drifting down. as Jimmy Nichol prepares to take this free kick. Goalkeeper's ball. Osgood. Riley giving it a chase with McQueen. <laughs> he certainly gave McQueen some, some hammer then. Here's Langan. Knocked out by Buchan. Steve Powell trying to deliver it back to Langan and does. But Houston can get the uh, clearance. Only as far as Powell. Steve Powell. Macari back to Houston. Osgood. Daly giving it. Uh, Little stick over there, and all this time Alan Biley is lying down injured just outside the box. Gordon McQueen attracting the referee's attention to him, but uh, referee Lloyd letting play go on. And as the ball hits the halfway line, he says, Okay, let's have some treatment for the lad. The worried faces of Colin Addison there, and his partner in management, John Newman. Aidan McCaffrey waiting to come on, the substitute. Colin Addison waiting to see Alan Biley come off on a stretcher. There's Gordon McQueen attacking. Now Jovan Jovanovic. And they're staying away from him and he lets the left foot go. Skidded only about a foot wide of the left-hand post. Nicky Jovanovic. Well, that would have been something if he'd got his name on the score sheet in his first game in British football. Just wide. Nickel again. Jordan and Epson is there. Skates away from Nickel. Jerry Daly looks and finds Langan again attacking. Davis! Oh, a superb save! Oh, that really was a bit special by Gary Bailey. Wonderful header. And look at the grin on his face. He enjoyed that. This was a beautiful ball laid off from Daly. Langan crosses it perfectly. And now watch number 10. Davis come in. Lovely touch. Hits the post and Bailey's got it. Brian, we've got a couple of minutes left, plus quite a lot of stoppage time, I would think, for the injury to Alan Bailey. Macari will lose that. Oh, 
Well, it's been a fighting, battling performance by Derby County. And it doesn't look as though it's going to get them very much more than just the one point. And they've still got to protect that for a few minutes yet. Davis, robbed by Grimes. Nickel, Coppel, Grimes. And there goes McElroy, and this is dangerous. Jordan coming in on the far post. And that will be a goal for McElroy. It's 2-1 Manchester United. That one break by McElroy has settled this match. Those are the travelling United supporters. There's about 8,000 of them here this afternoon. And they're well pleased. Grimes it was. Shifts this ball forward. McElroy going in the right side, which was always dangerous then. The ball across the face of the goals. Langan hooks it away, but that is a gift for Sammy McElroy. And it's 2-1. Well, 44 minutes on our watches. And uh, once again, a sadness for Derby County. Jordan down. McElroy helps that back. Caffrey didn't get it clear. Jordan stabs it back to Grimes. McQueen. Long pass back, which Buchanan will, or Buchan rather, will complete. We've had three minutes of stoppage time. It was a long hold up for Bailey. Mickey Thomas hoaks that in the air. Koppel is after it. Koppel past Langan. Looking for the cross. Oh, own goal! Oh, that is a total tragedy. Well, that is unbelievable tragedy. Barry Powell, who until today hadn't scored a goal for Derby County, has now scored two. One for Derby County and ping that one for Manchester United. That's 3-1. That is the end of the ballgame. Totally and completely. Derby County. Just time for the kickoff. And the final whistle goes. The 8,000 travelling Manchester United supporters well pleased. The team came back from being a goal down to Barry Powell. Equalised through Mickey Thomas, fought a grim battle in the second half. Went ahead through McElroy and now wrap it up 3-1 with a desperately unlucky own goal from Barry Powell. Sadness ahead, obviously, for Derby County. Well, what a whirlwind finish there. Indeed, those two points now put Manchester United level at the top with Liverpool. Though Liverpool have a game in hand and a superior goal difference as well. And there was a moment of controversy over Manchester United's first goal. Did it actually cross the line? Joe Jordan playing the ball in here. And it's uh, little Steve Koppel there with a good, powerful header. Unlucky to see that bounce back off the post. But here's Mickey Thomas coming in. And I think you'll see that the ball was, in fact, completely over the line by the time the Derby County goalkeeper scooped it back into play. But what exactly happened when Alan Bailey was injured and had to be carried off? A collision with Gordon McQueen, said Bailey afterwards. Well, we'll see them arrowed there, the two gentlemen, McQueen and Bailey. McQueen on the left and Bailey. The cameras, quite properly, though, were following the play. And now don't pick up the instant as uh, Manchester United go forward into the attack. When the ball comes back again, you'll see that uh, Mr Bailey is on the floor there after that collision with Gordon McQueen. But coming up next, an important game in the second division as Luton Town face Notts County. Spurs against Southampton, a chance to meet Jimmy Greaves and a look back to football ten years ago this month when George Best was in great scoring form and that's after this break.
The Big Match, Part 3, production number 40025, recorded 3rd of the 2nd, 1980. This is take one. Welcome back to the big match. For our second match today, we feature Luton Town, challenging near the top of the second division, and Notts County at Kenilworth Road. The pictures are from Anglia Television. The commentator is Jerry Harrison. I'm sorry about the shirt clash if you're watching in black and white. Luton are attacking the goal to your right. Mayer. Nicely into Masson. Mayer going for the return. Nice ball. Hill tackles. The mud comes up. And Mayer almost getting the one the inside Ricky Hill there. Fine pass from Masson. And if he's allowed to do that, then uh, he could cause trouble. But there uh, could well be trouble for Luton here because it's a free kick with Stubbs and Blockley coming up with Christie starting a run towards the near post over Christie's head. And put it. Well, Christie looks as if he was going to get hold of that one. Christie, it wasn't the one who scored it. Short one wasn't well organized but nobody coming to challenge it Christie couldn't get it and tucked in there past goalkeeper Finlay Saxby and straight to the Knox players and Chris is going to get this one good goalkeeping by Saxby and then hooked away as it ran free by Finlay rather well Christie was very close to getting that one Finlay got them off the hook Christie coming in on this one and see how fast Finlay comes off his line but it looks as if he was through and then it's hooked away by Saxby. Grealish has gone for West on the left. Steen is through the middle. It's a good ball. Benjamin stays with him. Here's Hatton now. He's in a good position. Great goalkeeping. Hatton again and off for another corner. Great play by both sides. Excellent build up by Luton. And the final finish not quite there. As the ball went through to Steen, it's touched on to Bob Hatton. He gets a good shot in, but see how fast the goalkeeper comes off his line. Stevens looking for a man to pass to or throw it to, but the covering by Notts County is good. Now Greenish is going to get away here. And it's going to come to West. Finds Mosswell. Benjamin over quickly. And a tricky cross. Tucked over the top when he was... Look to be in trouble, floating towards the top of the goal area, and indeed he applauds the opponent. Moss, seeing the goalkeeper coming off his line, goes for the top corner and just touched over. West. Benjamin's challenge, Masson again, foul. And a free kick from a situation almost identically as far as the uh, spot is concerned from which Notts County scored in the third minute but meanwhile we're going to have a delay while there is a substitution it's McCulloch who's coming off Doherty coming on so one midfield player ready for another Moss the kick a tricky one a brilliant header Saxby the scorer a pinpoint cross from Moss the very same spot from which Masson put his over it wasn't White who got it, it was Saxby and that's 1-1 one, one. here's the kick again David Moss the big centre half is up there and in she goes. 
There's a push there by O'Brien. That's a free kick. Well, Luton throwing everything into this to try and rescue this miserable home form. Price turning it up for West. Tricky one here. Hatton. turned in favour of Luton Town. That was a great piece of play. They kept their patience. How's this for a turn when it comes back from White? And the goalkeeper really didn't see it. Two goals in the last 12 minutes there for Luton, and incidentally the own goal right at the start was by the Luton defender, Mal Donaghy. But now it's time for our special feature where we look at events in football that happened 10 years ago this month. For example, in this very week 10 years ago, in 1970, Spurs lost an FA Cup replay away to Crystal Palace and manager Bill Nicholson promptly dropped four key men for the next home match and by coincidence, just as it was yesterday, their opponents at White Hart Lane were Southampton. The men who were dropped incidentally were Cyril Knowles, uh, Alan Gilsey, and they used to call him the King of White Hart Lane, Joe Kinnear and the one that caused most comment of all though, Jimmy Greaves. There was also no place for a youngster called Steve Perryman but Bill Nicholson confirmed that he was only being rested. Perryman is a part of Tottenham's future, said the manager. Well, Bill Nicholson was absolutely right there. You might be interested to know the result of that Spurs v Southampton match in 1970. It was 1-0 to Southampton. I'm not going to tell you what the result was yesterday. You can find out for yourself a little later on. And still on the subject of Southampton, Terry Payne. Well, he equaled the club's scoring record of 188 goals when he scored in a 4-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday. McShannon has now beaten that record, of course. And talking about goal-scoring records in 1970, Jeff Hurst broke the West Ham scoring record with goal 154. It came from the penalty spot in a 3-1 defeat against Coventry City. Uh, there was news in February 1970 that the England manager, Sir Alf Ramsey, had been offered what was then a breathtaking £10,000 a year to manage the Portuguese club Benfica. But Sir Alf said, I shall not go abroad, I'm an Englishman, and English football is my life. It's a bit sad, really, when you think about it in 1980, that there's still no place in English club football for Sir Alf. In February 1970, Peter Osgood, who'd scored two hat-tricks in that month for Chelsea, also made his first appearance for England in a match against Belgium in Brussels. Uh, England won 3-1. Meanwhile, Osgood's Chelsea teammate, 18-year-old Alan Hudson, is selected for the England under-23 side against Scotland. And another flamboyant character was in the news in February 1970, George Best. He ended a 28-day suspension in time to play in a cup tie for Manchester United at Northampton. United won 8-2. Best scored six goals. And the man marking him was the Northampton fullback Ray Fairfax, who said afterwards, why, oh, why did it have to happen to me? The only time I got close to him was when we went off at half-time and at full-time. <laughs> well, you'll see what he means now. Manchester United are in the dark shirts. Dixie McDonald. Yeah. Perrin forward for Kidd. In the middle is Morgan and Best. Book could lose it. It's Best. Georgie Best. Good jump then by Dave Sadler. Perrin through for Best. Here he goes again. Georgie Best. Charlton feeding Kidd. Best free in the middle. Willie Morgan coming over to help Kidd now. And a chance for Best. Here's the hat trick. There it is eventually. Well, well, well. Georgie Best makes it a hat trick. Brian Kidd. Save over then was Brooks. Kidd again. Here's Best. Number four, Georgie Best, just the tiniest touch. Touch for Kidd. Brian Kidd, Best going through the middle. He's on for five. There it is. And what a difference this man makes to any front line. There's George Best, two burns. Has Kidd forward on the far side of two unmarked men. One of them is Willie Morgan, who should get another goal here. No, Kidd does. Number four running is Clark. That's a good ball. There's Large. And now Dixie McNeil. It's there. 
Dixie Manil gets one back. Kid who's twice been down with an injury. Is Crerand. Best. Here's the record. There it is. George Evest sets a new scoring record for Manchester United. Six goals in a game. As Kiernan moves in on four, five defenders, United defenders. Fairbrother. Cross ball, Large going in. And he's got it. Frank Large. But even George Best, in such magical form, couldn't get Manchester United to Wembley that year. That year, the cup was won by Chelsea. Also ten years ago this month, there was a young man that few had heard of, named Kevin Keegan, playing in a cup game for Scunthorpe United away to Swindon. There he is, coming in from the right of the picture there. Sadly for Kevin, though, Scunthorpe were beaten 3-1. But at least the young man, who by the end of the decade was to become European Football of the Year, played a small part in the Scunthorpe goal that day against Swindon. Keegan. This is dear. He's got Kerr outside, gives it in. Good pass. George, fine move this. Chance for Cassidy. Great chance. It's there. Cassidy has scored. Scunthorpe United have taken the lead. Kevin Keegan, 1970 style. And while we're looking back on days gone by, I thought you might be interested in this old Crystal Palace programme sent to me by Mr S.J. Whiting of 17 Stubbs Hill, Dorking in Surrey, on the question of raising finance for buying new players. This, remember, is in September 1946. The Palace fans have been invited to spend either one and threepence or one and sixpence to watch home games. And for those who paid one and sixpence, well, the directors wish to thank all those spectators attending who paid the threepence extra, which money will be used exclusively for the purchase of new players. And a total, to the date, 98 pounds and sixpence. And I suppose for that these days, you'd, well, you'd maybe just to get about three pairs of boots and not much more. Our last match today is Spurs against Southampton from White Hart Lane. I tell you, they were still getting their breath back there after that amazing cup tie against Swindon in midweek when Spurs scored twice in the last six minutes to beat Swindon. There was almost an air of carnival and celebration there yesterday to the point that a team of parachutists came dropping in. To the amusement of the crowd, this is somewhat half an hour before the kickoff. And indeed, one of them that came skidding in a moment or two after this actually had the, the match ball with him. There he is in the bag there. I tell you, it couldn't have been an easy job because there was quite a blustery wind around North London and this gentleman here, he didn't quite make it, in fact, as you'll see in a moment. Disappearing, <laughs> heaven knows where, but certainly not at White Hart Lane. He disappears outside the ground there somewhere. All this then, a preliminary to the arrival of the teams. And first of all, here are the home team Spurs. And Spurs take the field, one of their former stars, Jimmy Greaves, a guest here today with his wife Irene. In fact, he's also doing a bit of work because ATV are making a full-length documentary on it, we shown on ITV later this month. The Spurs side then, it's bad news that Steve Perriman, who injured a knee when he saved a certain own goal on Wednesday night, he's out. Ricardo Villa is also out injured. But Terry Yorath returns after flu, Terry Naylor replaces Perriman, and Peter Taylor is in the number 11 shirt in place of Villa. Meanwhile, Southampton, they're unchanged. It's the side that beat Manchester City 4-1 in the last game. They didn't play last week, incidentally. The absentees still are Steve Williams, who's got a troublesome stomach injury, and David Peach, who gets a game in the Southampton reserves today after a long layoff through injury. The referee is Reg Robinson of Woodbridge, and we're going to join the game now in the first half. Hoddle. Naylor. Then Hoddle again for top. Yora. Newton's made a run down the right. And a very good piece of play indeed by the young fullback. And uh, the extraordinary thing was that Yorick, without looking, seemed to know that he was making that run. In for Hoddle. Made on for Naylor. A little touch there for Taylor. Oh, he tried to go straight through Hebert. Here's Hewton, though. Hewton's continued down that left. 
Pratt playing it in first time, but nobody up there in a threatening position. Morgan's uh, header didn't get a lot of ground. Hollow with the shots. And a goal kick. And with 20 minutes gone, neither defence has had yet the slightest scare. Ardiles. John Pratt. Armstrong. Played in nicely there for Ardiles. Pratt playing it on for Hollow. Dumped there by Holmes. And a free kick to Tottenham. signs and a bit of frustration from Peter Taylor and then the little chip coming in there and Southampton could so easily have been Alan Ball is going absolutely crazy with his defence there and quite rightly too uh, I'm sure Laurie McMenemy who was here on uh, Wednesday would have spotted the danger there and that was the identical position from which Jerry Armstrong scored the winner against Swindon and again it was a Peter Taylor free kick and Armstrong was allowed to go absolutely free but didn't get a touch with his head free kick to Southampton which they've already taken ball coming in there ever trying to get a header in there but a good piece of play by Naylor got it away for Tottenham only as far here as Watson trying to force his way through physically and a foul against the Southampton defender it's going to look as though Southampton might be making a useful situation there for themselves as it is it's a free kick which ball has now taken here for Walton driven in there and pushed away well by Barry Davis Holmes turning it back again. If the big men are up, it could be trouble. Baker with a shot through a crowd of players for hitting a Spurs defender and getting it away. And here's Taylor. Last one. Now faced by Gola. For a moment, there might have been another corner given away by uh, Ivan Gorak, but this time it was more accurately played to the goalkeeper, Peter Wells. Short touch there for Baker. Yes, Holmes, this could be trouble for Tottenham. A shot by Holmes and it hits. Harry Danes on the left foot. Good swift break that by Southampton. And Holmes always dangerous when he gets it on the left foot. And then he hit the left foot of uh, Harry Danes. And it on by Shannon for Baker. Heading there towards Holmes. And this could be it. Holmes and again hitting the left foot of Danes. Well, that's twice in uh, about 90 seconds. Nick Holmes has been right through there. And twice it's been the left foot of Barry Danes that has denied him the chance of putting Southampton into the lead. Watson's header. And out Baker. Shannon. Challenged. Really firmly there by Hewton. Yorath, a good ball played here for Naylor. Played in again for Hollow, right up there amongst the front men now. Can Hollow do something here? What a lovely bit of skill. And how near to being a really brilliant player. Getting applause from his own teammates, and quite rightly so, when he took that ball from Naylor and took it on his chest. And the angle was always an awkward one, but somehow he still got a little lob floated in there just beyond the far post. Pratt. Watson heading it down quite comfortably there for Nicol. Ball to Golak. Play forward again towards Boyer. Ball joining in the attack again. Shannon after this one. Naylor got ahead to it though. after this one a free kick to Tottenham which Naylor's taken Taylor onside now is this the chance for Spurs punched away well by Peter Wells Southampton caught out a little there the speed which Spurs got that move going and Wells equal to Taylor's shot
really boring with right now. Now York. Wait wide for Hugh. Adilis. Oh, and Newton going on his way across the goal there, but in fact it was cut out well there by Watson. And in fact, the, uh, the heavy rain that's falling now is going to just make that top a little bit greasy and could in fact quicken the pace in this game. If you'd like to apply for that job, I can surely give you the address. straight away but Golak had other ideas that's a good cross when he did come in towards Boyer Holmes with a shot and he's wide with his on the right of Hoddle. Callister going outside him as well. Still with Hoddle though. Played for York. Wide here for Jerry Armstrong. But it wasn't a good one. And a chance now for Southampton to make a break with Hebert. Hebert going on his own. And he might get all the way to try a shot. Hitting Barry Danes once again. And Spurs are saved once more. It looked as though... Shannon might have been in an offside position, and Hebert may have suspected that himself. Made all the running and got in the shot. Now Shannon is offside. That's two in the first half he saved with his left foot, and that was something around the knees, I would have thought, by Barry Danes. Good reactions, though. to go. It looks back with header towards Boyer over the top. Boyer thought it was a corner. Reg Robinson, the referee, pointing quite firmly to the edge of the six-yard area that it's a goal kick. of that goal and it's uh, Graham Baker in fact who turns it away just a trace possibly of offside there as Peter Taylor turned that ball in skidding across that goal Now Ardiles from York. 
Hoddle. Trying to get it into Yardinas' path again. And here comes Southampton with Hebert, a long range shot. Surely no problem there for Danes. might mean that he's got to have his eyes about him even more so in the five minutes that we're making. So there will be people who say that he should have been brandishing a few cards and one thing or another, but uh, who was guilty and who was not guilty, I'm not sure. Maybe in the end he came to the right decision. I'm sure he did. Not the most memorable days at White Hart Lane. I think Peter Wells in the Southampton goal had one serious shot to save and Barry Danes three another it was the sort of afternoon it was and it finished in a goalless draw but to be fair it was a very good point for Southampton now in third position five points behind Liverpool and Manchester United though but still very much on course for a place in Europe and one old goal scorer I'm sure was shaking his head at uh, what might have been Jimmy Greaves one of the best loved Tottenham players since the war now a columnist in the Sun newspaper and the subject of a coming documentary on ITV what does Jimmy think of the present Spurs side uh, the present Spurs side, well, frankly, uh, the way they play at times worries me a little bit. They, they play the offside game a little bit too much for my liking, and they're a bit square at the back. Um, up front, we know that uh, they're not scoring goals, but uh, this can come. But, of course, on their day, and I've seen them on their day, they're capable of beating any side in, in, in the first division. And one would hope, I mean, obviously, I, I'm still... A Spurs fan, my heart's still with the club, uh, although I have to stay neutral, or try to. Uh, I'd like to see them at Wembley, obviously, and I think they've got a very good chance. Do you, do you feet itch a little bit when you see them play out there? Oh, yes. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you're in a situation now, Brian, where I, I sit there every game and I score six goals. <laughs> Three for each side. <laughs> yes. You can't foul. I mean, it, 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 it's beautiful. Yes. I mean, it's, you're in a great position. Yes. Tell me about this documentary that's being made about you now by ATV. Well, the ATV documentary is uh, basically based on my book. This one's on me. And, uh, Tell, me about taken, that. Tell me about that. Well, we've taken my life story, uh, 
basically from the early Chelsea days right the way through to uh, my problem that I had with drinking uh, 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 several years ago uh, up until the present day. And it brings in all the players and everybody who I've been connected with in football and it gives my life story tracing it through the football and the drinking problem yes. up until as we sit here today, basically. And I think anybody watching will be glad to say you, you conquered that problem now. Well, one never conquers no, the problem. Uh, it's a problem that I live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, hopefully, having done so for a long period of time now, I hope to continue doing it. Because basically, uh, it's nice to be back in the land of the living and, and enjoying watching football and meeting all my old associates, including yourself again. Good. That's nice of you to say that. And in fact, you're doing this column for The Sun. What else are you doing with your life now, Jim? Well, I do several things. I, I'm tied up with a, an up-and-over garage door firm down at Swindon, and I do life insurance and pensions with uh, Abbey Life. So uh, I keep myself very busy, Brian. Very busy indeed. It's lovely to see you again. And you, mate. Thanks a lot, Jim. Jimmy Greaves, who else? Well, that's it for this week. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll have more action for you on the big match next week. Pity that game at Tottenham wasn't quite the spectacle we'd all hoped for, but at least there were one or two moments, like Mickey Shannon coming out to the game, knowing that his horse, Man on the Run, was running at that very moment in the 2.45 at Stratford. Still running, yes, Mick, because I'd promised to signal him the result of that race from our television gantry. But sadly, the news that eventually I had to give him wasn't the news that Mick Shannon wanted. The horse had finished nowhere. And that wasn't the only frustration we saw yesterday either.